Hi everyone, welcome to this second video on this World War II era wooden propeller blade. Now, in the previous video, we showed you how we actually used photogrammetry, which is taking a bunch of pictures of this blade to construct a 3D model. We were then able to make slices of this blade and we saw that there's a really nice twist on this. And we were also able to analyze the airfoil sections that we saw on this blade. Now, in this video, let me put this down again, really heavy. We're going to see how we can actually use this 3D model to actually create a 3D flow analysis or a CFD flow analysis. Let me show you how we did this. So the first thing that we had to do was to get more information about this blade because we know it's about 52 inches in length, um, but then we found this website, which is really useful. If you look at this one, for example, this overview page, this showed us that there are multiple setups. So we saw that, uh, for example, this wooden blade was used on the Volti BT-13 aircraft. Uh, so we went for a two-bladed setup. Even though we're not sure that this is the right setup, we just went for this one. Um, also, we knew that the blade is 52 inches in length. So that means two blades is already 104 inches without the hub in the middle. So to, to leave some space for the hub, uh, I just went for the biggest one that I could see on this website, apart from the three-bladed one, which is this one. It's 110 inches, um, so that's exactly what we went for. And then we also looked around for some more information on this uh, Volti BT-13 airplane. I know this one has the aluminum propeller and so on, uh, but we needed to know just how fast the airplane is going. So the cruise speed for this one um, is set to be around 130 miles per hour. And we want to actually see what is the most efficient setup for this propeller. So we're going to go for cruising speed. And on some other websites, we found that the RPM would be around 1900 for this propeller. So then the next thing that we did um, was actually to mount this propeller and to create a digital model which would match the one that we saw on the internet. So I took this picture, we scaled it uh, so that this picture that you see here has a tip to tip length of 110 inches. So then we played around with the propeller, um, sized it. Uh, I kept the aspect ratio the same, so the scale in all dimensions, all directions is the same. And then we positioned it correctly and we just drew a central hub there, just a cylinder, uh, which in real life is this clamping part. I'm not sure, I have to research this, or if you know, just drop a comment. I do believe that um, it's possible to change the blade pitch angle during flight, I'm not sure. Um, in this case, what we're gonna do is virtually change the blade pitch angle because this has a huge impact on the aerodynamics. If I take the side view on this one, what you'll see here is that the twist is still there, of course. Uh, we saw that last time. So there's a different angle of attack at the root compared to the tip. Um, and I'm going to use the fastest moving part, which is the blade tip, um, as a reference. So this edge here, I'm going to use that as a reference to denote the blade tip angle. So in this case, I put it in a horizontal position. This one, I'm going to call this the zero uh, degree blade tip angle. So why is this so important? Well, if you look at the aerodynamics, um, if we take a screenshot and plot this, so we said that we're going to go for 130 miles per hour forward velocity, which means the air is coming in like this at 130 miles per hour. Um, so this is how well I can write and paint. Um, but then this one is moving forward and at an RPM of 1900, that's really extremely fast. The tip speed is around <laughs> max 0.8 or even higher. So that means um, there's air coming in relative to, to the blade um, at a much, much higher velocity. This is probably around uh, 600 miles per hour. So huge difference. So that means the combined vector, if you just add these vectors together, is actually one which looks like this. So that means if your blade is at a zero degree angle of attack, this one, you will get a pressure buildup on this side and a negative pressure on this side as the air actually comes in, bounces off and actually creates a suction effect at the rear side, which means your lift, which is perpendicular to the relative wind vector, is oriented like this, which means the components along the flying direction is this one, which is a negative thrust. So if this is T, our thrust, this is negative. So that's why zero degrees is not a very good idea. So if I go to this blade angle, we actually modify this and export this for various angles from zero to 60 uh, in steps of five degrees. If I just plot 
uh, one at 40 degrees, which is minus 40 in this model, and take a screenshot again, you'll see that the, the, the situation is a lot different now. So if we go to this one, You'll see that if we plot the same vectors, so we have our incoming velocity of 130, we have our uh, blade movement angle, so if I just keep this more or less the same, and I take the combined vector, which is this one, and if I compare it to this angle now of the blade, you'll see that the air will actually hit this side of the blade and create a suction side of, on this side. So the air actually comes in, bounces off like this, and actually creates uh, an airflow like this, which means perpendicular to the airflow vector, this is your thrust vector, which if you project it on the flying direction, this is your actual uh, thrust forward. That's why it's so important. Now it's not just important to get a lot of thrust, it's also important to get a lot of thrust um, while keeping the power as low as possible because you want to save fuel. So what we did then, is to actually um, set up this propeller. So if I uh, start from scratch, so we put this in air shaper above the ground, um, we put in the velocity of 130 miles per hour, and then what we did is we defined the propeller. Um, so this is actually the 10 degree angle of attack. So you can see that there's like a slight angle, 10 degrees here. Um, we want to select the components of this propeller, like this. And then we just hit OK, and then the software will detect the central axis of rotation. Uh, so no um, room for error there. Um, and we can change the direction, but it's also already correct. This is the way it's supposed to rotate. Um, and then you can set the RPM. And you'll see that we get a warning already at 1000 RPM, because it's going beyond max 0.3, which is considered to be uh, kind of a threshold when you have to take compressibility into account. And when you cross into uh, the domain beyond max 0.6, you get a, a proper warning saying this is really, really fast. So we're going to run our simulations in an incompressible way. Later on, perhaps in the next video, we can see what the effect is if we start running simulations in a compressible way. So we ran these simulations um, and it's really interesting to see what happens. If I scroll through uh, 10, 20, 40, 60 degrees, um, you can really see if I just reset the camera here um, and then go to the next one. You can really see this is, let me go back here, uh, this is 10 degrees angle of attack and what you see here is that we saw in the picture that at around 10 degrees this one is actually pointed straight into this uh, relative wind vector uh, which means the air will actually speed up left and right of the blade uh, because it does have a thickness um, it will create low pressure on both sides of the blade and only a bit of pressure at the front here, which is the stagnation, the leading edge. Um, but on both sides, there's uh, basically negative uh, pressure. So just a suction effect because of this air speed up. Uh, it's just at the root that you can have some different effects because this is just a blunt cylinder. Uh, but the, the airflow sections, there's not, they're not really doing much. So if I reset this camera, and go back to this view. If you then go to the next one, you'll see at 20 degrees angle of attack, you do start to see a wingtip vortex here, which is really interesting. Uh, this only uh, arises when there's a pressure delta between the pressure side and the suction side. So that means the air wants to jump from the pressure side. So now you actually see pressure on this side of the blade all the way to the low pressure, uh, uh, to the suction side. So this is the pressure side, this is the suction side. So the air actually wants to bypass by curling around the tip. And this curl uh, is actually a 3D swirl that you'll see, which is this wing, the vert vortex. Uh, so really interesting to see. If you then continue um, to a higher angle of attack, you'll see that you still have this uh, vortex. But what you see is that this blob here is a bit more messy. And that is because you start to get flow separation at this higher angle of attack. So you're still generating a lot of thrust, perhaps even more so than the 20 degrees, um, but it comes at the cost of um, this blade profile actually partially being installed, which means you have to put in a lot more power uh, to get lift out of it or thrust out of it. And if you go to 60 degrees angle of attack, this becomes even more dramatic um, and even your thrust is starting to wind back. So then what we did is we plotted all of these results in this Excel sheet. So I'll spare you all of the details, um, but we ran simulations from 0 to 60, uh, blade pitch angle or angle of attack, um, in steps of 5 degrees. And then we plotted uh, the results. So if you go to Airshaper and you click on a propeller, um, you just get an automated summary of both the torque 
th power and thrust values as well as the coefficients. So the advance ratio, which is an indication of how fast the blade is moving forward relative to its uh, tip speed. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to the definitions uh, in the comments. Uh, the same for the thrust coefficient, which is kind of a normalized thrust relative to the advance ratio, the power coefficient, and also the efficiency, which in a way denotes how much you're getting out of the propeller in function of how much power you're putting into it. So you want a lot of thrust um, without putting too much power into it. So we plotted all of these values uh, for the different propellers, or at least for the different blade angles, and then we plotted these. Um, so as we saw, uh, the more you increase the angle of attack, which is this one, the more perpendicular this one is to this relative wind vector, the more it will act like, like, like um, uh, a wall uh, pushing air away. So you have to uh, take into account you'll get a lot more torque, or you need a lot more torque to actually maintain the same RPM. The power curve is basically the same curve because power is the torque multiplied with the RPM and the RPM being a fixed value is just the same curve but with different units. Um, so what you see here is that the, the torque goes all the way to up to 12,000 newton meters and beyond theoretically if you would ever get to this uh, speed and the power also goes up to quite high, high values. So if you look at this one, um, so uh, to make it a bit easier, if I divide for example the power at let's say 40 um, by a thousand, that is actually uh, 1,350 watts, uh, which is, is around 1,700 horsepower or something, which is really a lot, uh, which is far beyond what I saw on the internet for this plane, but we'll get to that later on. The most important thing is how much thrust you can actually get out of this uh, propeller. And here it's quite interesting. So just like for an airfoil, um, if your angle of attack is actually too much, um, the lift will start to go down because the air behind the airfoil is not curving downward, creating the suction effect, but is going into stall. Um, and that is where you're actually uh, losing lift, even though you're increasing the power that you're putting into it. Um, so that's really interesting. You definitely have no reason to be anywhere beyond this point, um, beyond 40 degrees blade angle. Now, there's actually not much reason to go beyond, let's say, 20 degrees either, because this one, which is the efficiency parameter, um, this one indicates how much thrust you're getting out of it in function of how much uh, you're putting into it. Uh, again, I'll, I'll drop the link to this <clears throat> in the comments. Um, so you can see that your max efficiency is somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees. So theoretically, if you want to know it precisely, we would have to run some more simulations uh, like at six, seven, eight, nine degrees, for example, to get a more precise um, uh, capturing of this curve here. Uh, so really interesting to see that this is the most efficient operating point. Um, if you then go back to the power, um, the power at, let's say, 15 degrees um, is actually, oh, sorry, I, yeah, much, much lower. Um, so this, uh, yeah, so this is in kilowatts. So that means this is around 300, a bit less than 300 horsepower, which is exactly what we saw on the internet in terms of power rating of the aircraft. So very likely those aircraft were operating at the max uh, efficiency range and not at the max thrust range. Keep in mind though, when you're taking off, you do want a lot of thrust. It could be um, that during takeoff, you're kind of going past uh, the most efficient point to get the thrust to take off as fast as possible. And then you just, uh, uh, go to a lower blade pitch angle. If these have variable blade pitch, I'll have to research that, or if you know, just drop a comment if these planes had this or not, uh, blade pitch control during flight. Uh, the power coefficient is basically the same as the power curve is just normalized uh, via your advanced ratio and the same for the thrust coefficient. And that was basically it. Let me get my propeller again because we have some extra news for you. So now we analyze this one. We, just, we didn't just create a 3D model. We analyzed the full thing in 3D uh, to find the most optimum point. We saw that we have nice correlation with power values that we found off the internet. If you have any comments though, let us know if we said something which wasn't correct, if we should do something else to improve our analysis. Now in the next video, stay tuned because it's gonna be even cooler. We're gonna put that 3D propeller model that we just made onto a full aircraft. It's gonna be a public 3D model that we found off the internet. Um, but the main thing we wanna see is what is gonna happen if the downwash of this propeller is being disturbed by actually an airplane sitting behind it or flying behind it. This will have an upstream effect on the propeller. And we also wanna see what the effect of the propeller is on the airplane. How much downwash, how much wind do you get uh, towards the cockpit? Um, 
how much friction does this generate on the aircraft, how much swirl does this add uh, to the wings, um, and so on. So stay tuned. If you like this video, hit the like button. Please do drop a comment if you have more information on this. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.